In this video, we are going to talk about 5 habits how to be good with your money. So before starting this video, please like this video, and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. Do you believe that your financial situation has been turned upside down? Alternative to this is that you have been driven to get your finances in order so that you may make more money with your money when the new year gets underway. Whatever the solution, it's vital to establish healthy financial habits from the beginning of the process. When we repeat the same acts over and over again until they become second nature, we develop our financial habits, just like any other habit. The ability to establish a savings routine is beneficial if you have established a pattern of saving consistently, but it is detrimental if you are prone to using your credit card on the fly. In spite of the fact that bad habits can lead to financial issues, good habits can help you prevent them, and can also help you spend wisely, save effectively, and reach your most important financial goals more rapidly. Here are the 5 habits how to be good with your money. So let's start. Number 5. Pay yourself first. Create a habit of paying yourself first before paying any other debts. This will help you to avoid debt traps later on. Another way of putting it is that you should set aside and invest a portion of your earnings before you do anything else with your finances. According to the book The Richest Man in Babylon, written by George S. Clayson, the parables are taught by a fictional Babylonian character named Arkid, who begins his life as a poor scribe and finally climbs to become the richest man in Babylon. What strategies did he employ in order to do this? You can obtain financial security by following the first law of wealth, which advises that you should save at least 10% of whatever you earn first and do not confuse your required spending with your wants. Beginning with a small amount is preferable to saving nothing at all. Starting with something is preferable than saving nothing. Whatever you choose to do, the most important thing is that you are forming a new habit of putting a portion of your hard-earned money to work in your favor rather than for the benefit of another person. The remaining of your profits can be used to cover your living expenses and purchase the necessities for your survival after you've paid yourself your salary. Number 4. Spending less than you earn. You may find yourself in a downward spiral of debt if you spend more money than you make on an ongoing basis. When people use credit cards, they often don't pay off their debts on time each month. This results in high penalties and interest rates that can take years to repay. When debating whether or not to spend money on something you want, always examine whether or not you genuinely need it before making your decision. Many people's spending and saving habits are influenced by their emotions and how they are feeling at the moment of purchase. Whenever we're feeling down, sad, or even pleased, it's easy to fall into the trap of overspending our money. However, while emotions are important when it comes to making financial judgments, these emotions aren't particularly effective when it comes to making logical decisions. Learn to be patient and make level-headed, rational decisions regarding money, rather than allowing your spending, saving, and investing habits to be dictated by your mood at any particular time, such as when you're stressed out. Number 3. Control your deb, speak to your professional financial advisor. In terms of money management, wealth accumulation, financial planning, and most importantly the development of an effective strategy for reaching your objectives, we are the people to turn to for assistance and guidance. Using our services, you will gain access to a vast amount of knowledge, certifications, and experience that would be difficult or impossible to achieve on your own schedule. In order to get your financial life back on track, you may want the advice of a professional to help you identify and address the underlying causes of your bad financial habits. If you're feeling stuck and unsure of how to build new financial habits, a qualified financial coach or financial therapist can help you get started. The author continues, in order to modify negative money habits and build healthy ones, you need someone who understands the emotional tie that money has with you. The likelihood of finding a solution fast increases when dealing with individuals that are well versed in the field of financial products and services. Instead, you need someone who is willing to put up the necessary effort to learn about the origins of the problem. Financial therapy may assist you in exploring your money-related limiting beliefs and narratives, as well as guiding you through the process of making changes that will aid you in overcoming these beliefs and narratives. You can find accredited financial counselors and therapists on the websites of organizations such as the Financial Therapy Association and the Association for Financial Counseling and Planning Education AFCPE, among others. Number 2. It's okay to take risks and have a mix of stocks and bonds in your investment portfolio. 
The tendency to either play it too safe with investments or to take unwarranted chances with them is one of the bad money habits your parents may have ingrained in you as a child. According to certified personal finance advisor Andrew Latham, maintaining a well-diversified investment portfolio is essential in order to prevent being a victim of this predicament. Your parents may have made investments in certificates of deposit CDs, but your financial advisor believes that they are no longer a viable investment because you will be guaranteed to earn less than the rate of inflation, which is presently 2%. Certificates of deposit are certain to cause you to lose purchasing power, in other words, money, according to Latham. As an alternative, build a portfolio that includes a mix of stocks and bonds. This will allow you to benefit from the growth of equities while also providing a safety net in the form of bonds. According to Latham, bond prices and stock prices are often in opposition to one another in their movements. It is entirely possible to break generational money habits and have a more positive connection with money if one receives the appropriate education and means to do so. Developing these habits in ourselves and our families, no matter how difficult the journey may be, will result in greater financial literacy and success for future generations, regardless of our age or our circumstances. Number 1. Educate yourself on finances Chances are, you didn't learn it in school. Knowing something is powerful, and this is especially true when it comes to money problems, as many people have discovered. The fact that the majority of us are not taught about money management in school means that we rely on the people in our lives to teach us, and we often end up following in their footsteps. According to George Blunt, a financial therapist, children can notice and evaluate whether money or bills are causing tension, fury, or discontent in their lives. According to the study, if financial matters result in favorable behavior, it is more probable that this behavior will be replicated in future situations. It is likely that our parents did not have access to financial education in the same manner that we do today, whether it be the ability to conduct a simple Google search, follow money experts on social media, or participate in financial literacy programs, when they were growing up. With so many financial gurus on social media these days, it's easy to read or hear a good advice and immediately recognize that it isn't something that you are presently doing, according to Connor Brown, founder of the financial literacy website After School Finance. In addition to saving time and money, taking use of free financial tools available online, or even enrolling in an online budgeting class, can assist you in having greater control over your personal financial circumstances. Having learned something new, you can pass that information on to your children, allowing them to begin their financial education at a young age as a result. What do you think of our list? Which thing do you like from above list? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.